It's Kellen, and today on Diversified Game, I have Jamal Ali. He's a motivational speaker. He can tell you what your daddy should have told you. He has various talents he's going to let us know about. But this is going to be a little bit different because we're also going to focus on a new venture that you guys have heard me talking about promoting how one of our former guests, Ty Nichols, is taking a group to Rwanda to show them how they can do real estate or expand their businesses in Africa. And they're going to be out there for an extended period of time, at least a month. But we're going to get into it. And I want to find out, Jamal Ali, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, my dear brother. Thank you. What made you say, it's time for me to go to Rwanda on this trip? Is this your first time? Give us your history. It'll be my first time on the continent. You know, it's, uh, I guess it's something that's been in me for, for quite a while as well. Um, about a year, a little over a year ago, I did my African ancestry and found out that I had a maternal uh, DNA, I share maternal DNA with um, the Fula people of uh, Guinea-Bissau, the Timne and Mende people of Sierra Leone, and the crew people of Liberia. And I was like, wow, you know, that's, that's powerful. So, so now I know. And um, so then my first thing was, man, I, I got to go to uh, Sierra Leone. You know, just got to go. And um, so I started doing my research and started looking online and just, you know, just so excited, so excited, so excited. And, but prior to that, I'd already been looking at uh, Senegal. That was my, my first choice. Uh, I have a friend there and a mutual friend, you know, uh, Brother Makdi as well. Um, so Senegal was my first choice. But when I uh, did my African ancestry, I said, man, I got to go to Sierra Leone. Uh, as I continue to do my research and just looking at online videos, the YouTube videos of, of Africa in general, and then uh, narrowing down to uh, Sierra Leone and, and that part of the, uh, uh, the continent, West Africa, um, I stumbled across the Gambia. And I was intrigued by what I saw in the Gambia. So I decided that, you know what, I'm going to the Gambia first, and then I'll backtrack in the following year, then I'll go to Sierra Leone. And as uh, you know, when you're on a mission and, and you're aligned with what you're supposed to be aligned with, the, the road takes its own detours. And if you're wise enough, you just follow the road, right? And so uh, <laughs> next thing you know, I'm, I'm interested in Rwanda. I had been looking at Rwanda, but not seriously in terms of a place to go because I said, you know what, it's, it's landlocked and I gotta be on the beach. You know, at least got to be able to walk to the beach, you know? Yeah. And uh, so that was the one reason I didn't really look at Rwanda too hard. Uh, but what I did look at, I, I really enjoyed. So having a conversation with you, um, and you mentioned Ty Nichols and his particular program that he's, he's getting ready to start up in Rwanda. When I looked at that, I was like, wow, this is perfect. Because, you know, my, my goal for going to, to the Gambia was to look at business, not only be on the continent for the first time to enjoy myself and vacation and, and, and connect with the people, but to do business on the continent. And so now this particular opportunity comes with a ready-made business, so to speak. I don't have to look for a business. I'm going there with a business already in place. So it just made a lot of sense. And uh, since then, I've been looking at Kigali in a different way, in Rwanda in a different way, more in-depth. Uh, and it's, it's an awesome place to be, man, in terms of um, just the people, the opportunity to do business. They have made it really, really easy for the diaspora to do business there. Uh, and so coupled with, with, with all of that, I'm like, hey, you know, I didn't waste any time. I got right on the phone with, with uh Ty, after you and I talked, we had a conversation, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to Kigali. Simple, period. Just, I'm going. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you you were you were quick on that, and I'm gonna tell you, and I and I know, you know, um, there were there was a, a little bit of um, you know, post office, you know, 
Uh, yeah. so this post office and all this things can be complicated, but you got your ticket quick. And after you, um, two others have followed and, yes. and, and jumped on it like, yep, this is the time, you know, and everybody's situation is different. But the fact that it was, you know, already in you, you've already gotten over, oh, I'm scared of Africa or it costs too much or will they kidnap me? You got that out of your head. So the opportunity got itself. Now, you have a business here, and I'd like you to let people know what you do because, you know, for somebody who's an entrepreneur, this should be kind of like second nature if stuff's not holding you back, like child support and other things that we jokingly talked about. So tell the people, what do you do here as well? I'm actually a, a keynote speaker as well as a success coach. The name of my company is Jamal Speaks. Jamal Speaks LLC. And we speak on the success principles and principles that maximize the human potential. That is, that is my realm, that is my interest, that is my purpose, that is, that's, you know, my passion is, is in that particular space. And so, um, yeah, that's, that's what we do, man. We're a keynote speaker and we teach coaches uh, in the coaching business, how to have an abundance of, of, of clients. Cause you know, in, in the coaching game, it's it, the number one challenge that most coaches are having is, is having a steady flow of clients to, to market their particular business to. And then once they have a steady flow of clients, if once they get to that particular point, uh, they have problems uh, automating the process. And in, in other words, they spend too much time talking to clients and, you know, that's what you do as a coach. But when you can automate the process where the automation can take care of that, then you can move forward and address and deal with more clients, i.e. Uh, make more money. And so that's, that's what I do. So I'm looking to, to incorporate uh, real estate, of course, once we get to Rwanda into the mix. So these types of businesses that I have allows me to do business anywhere in the world as long as I got a internet connection, got a phone, got a laptop. Hey, I'm in business. Definitely. And I think that, you know, it's great to come in as a student to Africa, clear out everything that the media has put, good and bad, because sometimes Africa can be romanticized. And to say, let me see it just through these clear visions but also that I have a business that is successful and that that business can expand. I'm sure you've seen the movie um, Black Without Borders. Yes. And, 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 and there was a guy, I didn't have a pot to piss in in America. And then I come here and I'm talking to Mandela and I'm, you know, and the other guy who was doing the mental um, health pretty much stuff, getting their mind right. So I can already see that, I already see it. Like I see, okay, if y'all know Jamal, Hug him now. He ain't coming back anytime soon. You gonna have to take a flight. <laughs> you gonna have to take a flight to get to Jamal right. um, because it's. I think things are really gonna blow up, and they're also um, when you do go to Sierra Leone. Let me know. There's a contact there. I'd like you to meet. Who he's a he's a past guest that we've had on recently, and he has a business and he has investment opportunities as well. Some mm -hmm. he's offered to um, us and Phil from the African diaspora. Um, okay. And there are various things that can be done in Sierra Leone. Um, that particular thing we didn't go on. Not that it was a bad thing. It just wasn't for us at the time. And, but it seems like a really good um, brother who has been vouched by various people. Okay. Um, you know, and I will say this. When you get to Africa, are you are you going alone? Or are you do you have a wife, girlfriend, or anything? You going alone? Going alone, no wife, no girlfriend, and uh, hopefully, you know, I, I can pick up one of those while I'm there. <laughs> you can pick up more than one if you want. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's that that would be just icing on the cake, uh, but that's not that's not the goal. That's not the mission, and it's 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 way back there. Uh, I'm just going to do what I do and, and be Jamal, and uh, I'm sure that I will attract what it is that I need, what it is that I, that I want. So that's, that's, that's on the back burner. Um, my goal is just to get there, find out the, the lay of the land, see how I can 
do what needs to be done to be successful from a real estate standpoint. Um, and then just go from there. I'm going to be there 90 days. Um, and, you know, I'll come back here, regroup, uh, think about some things, uh, reload and, and go back. You know, I have a, uh, I, I'd like to just say my goal was, uh, as far as Africa is concerned, is to do six months there, six months here. Of course, you have to have the type of business that allow you to do that. You have to have the cash flow that allow you to do that. Um, I have an 87-year-old mother. My mom will be 87 the 28th of this month. And so, so I have to, I'm in a position where I have to come and go. I, I just can't leave mom, you know, and she ain't, she ain't traveling to Africa, right? Nine times out of 10, she, she just ain't, ain't, ain't doing that. And I wouldn't want, wouldn't want to put that type of stress on her anyway. If she wants to go, hey, you know, she's going, right? But um, so I have to be in a, in a position where I can come and go so that I can, I can hang out with my mom as much as I possibly can. So my idea is to be in Africa two months out of the two months, come back here for two months, go back to Africa two months. So I want to roll like that. No, that, that's, that's beautiful. Now, my mom has passed, and I, I could just think about she had already traveled the world before having me, so she kind of put that bug in my ear and put me on my first flight at 12, said, you need to okay. go see the world, go see, uh, you know, John right. and over here, and she would let me travel by my, myself at a fairly uh, young age. But with even trying to, if you, you say, Mom, I set up a compound out there. Now, if you have anything, any siblings, that's a fight between them. Then yes. you try to take mom and to all the way to Africa where we can't see her. And, right. and, and right. so I can just see the family, you know, dynamic being like, man. But no, nah, that's a beautiful thing. At my 86, happy birthday to your mother. Um, Thank you. Any, many, many more years. Um, blessings. So with that, and, and that's a very easy thing to do. And right now, ticket prices are so cheap. It's like stock, buy now to sell later. In, in yes. um, so, you know, Rwanda will be the first step and you're gonna go there with definitely the right attitude. And you know, the right woman, I just say prepare your mind because there's nothing like, and I mean nothing like, and I've gone through it. You can ask my wife, uh, we've mm -hmm. been married 12 years, she'll tell you, he, it, it's nothing like an African woman. There's nothing <laughs> like an African woman, if, especially if you like tradition and yes. not necessarily Western tradition. My wife, her grandfather had hundreds of wives and there is something about that. Now me, I'm not trying to die early. So right. I got my one and one woman <laughs> is really, you know, I got two girls. So <laughs> I, yes, I, I got yes. a lot. Yeah. And I got eight aunties and, you know, a uh, hundred cousins. Right. You got to really be careful what you ask for being intentional because women can, you know, they can do it to you more than one way, folks. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so, but that's a beautiful thing that you're going to go out there. There's also when you go out there and I don't want to bombard you with too much, but if you go to my website, uh, mallofafrica.africa, there's a YouTuber a, and friend I call. Depo is his name, D-I-P-O. He has various investments through Africa. He's a young guy, Nigerian, that lives in Maryland. But mm -hmm. his brothers moved to Rwanda. They started, you know, the electric scooters that we see in all of our major cities and people can rent them off the street yes, or the, yes. the bikes or whatnot. Yeah. They uh -huh. started a company like that that is just getting started. And they're doing investment opportunities on those now. So if you go to the Mall of Africa and I'll text it to you and just, you know, do your due diligence, you might see something in Rwanda and say, hold on, I got two pennies. Let me put two pennies on this too. Right. I really like it here. Now I'm invested in a whole nother business. I don't even have to work. So That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. And, yes. And, you know, it, with unity, we all, we all win. Um, what are you expecting from Africa? Well, um, just to, when, when I listen to everybody else's story who's gone there either for vacation or who have repatriated, the one common thing that I'm hearing is like, as soon as I got off the plane, I felt at home. 
You see, so I just want to, I just want to get there, man, and just feel. I want to feel Africa, right? And then whatever comes over me, I want to feel that, you know, because I'm home. After all this time, I'm I'm home. So that's the only thing I'm really expecting, right? Is 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 to feel the the joy, the love, the the all the compassion, the passion from being on the continent. And I I, I just know the type of people that we are. Love is going to come from everywhere. I already know, right? Uh, yeah. So I'm going to be about love before I get there, so I can draw this love to me when I get there, right? Um, so this being my, my first trip, um, I'm just open. I'm open to what the universe is going to, going to bring to me. I ask some, some ideas, some dreams, some goals, and, but you know, I'm just open because I might want to go left and the universe say, no, you need to go right. You see, yeah. I'm open to what the universe is, is, is going to say to me. And, uh, I'm just looking for the, the experience of being on, on the continent and uh, the other thing that's, that's beautiful about uh, Rwanda as well is that I hear other people saying they've been in 10, 15, 20 African countries. I'm like, really? You know, like, yeah, that, that's got to be expensive, right? And I'm sure that it is to a, to a certain degree. But from Rwanda, I can get to the Congo. I can, from, from talking to Cap Thai, I can catch a bus and ride over to the Congo the Dem Democratic Republic of the Congo. So that's another country. I can jump on a plane and be in Tanzania. I can jump on a plane and be in, in um, Kenya. So my goal is to hit those three countries. So when I come back here, I have been to four African countries, right? So um, that's already in the plan, you see. Um, and so I've, I've, I've looked at all four of those countries as well over time in terms of, um, what they have to offer and, and, and what they're experiencing. And so I'm like, wow, so I'm going to Rwanda, but I'm hit these three other countries. So when I come back here, I'm in the four African countries in a three month uh, time span. So that's exciting in, in and of itself, you know, to be, ex be able to experience those other countries. Man, I mean, it's just a beautiful time. Now, do you have any children? I have three. I have one son and, and two daughters. Okay, are, and are they um, adults or are they still young? I have two adult uh, children as well as, uh, and, and my, my oldest is my son who has uh, given me a 13 year old granddaughter. And then also my youngest daughter is, is a 13 year old. Okay. Uh, so the, the, the oldest two, my son and daughter, they're, they're grown. Uh, my youngest is, is with her mom up in Pennsylvania. Um, so a part of what I'm doing is to be able to leave example, a legacy to them, you know, for them say, wow, my, my pops went to Africa. Maybe I should, let me, let me check this out myself, you know, and to be able to establish something there to, to be able to say, listen, come, come here, come home, come over here and visit pops. This is what I have for you. Right. This is how pops is rolling. Just get here. I got you. Right. And yeah. the goal is to be able to. When I depart and join the ancestors, they got this. You know, complimentary uh, uh, from from pops. So that's a part of being able to to pass that down. Now, I'm not able to I'm not in the position where I can do that right here in America. I don't really have anything to pass down to them but some wisdom, right? But <laughs> I can see myself in Africa being able to pass down a business because it's easier to establish business there. Uh, I mean, you, you can establish a chicken farm. Now here in America, you know, Tyson and all these, you know, they, get, they got all that sold up, you know what I'm saying? But you can go to Africa and start a chicken farm, man, with, with $500. You know, you but let's, let, let, let's just say a, a starting a chicken farm, right? Because I have an opportunity for um, folks. You know, I teach this, right? So yes. it, it's like our mentees and the folks we coach. And you want to go do this, you want to go do that. This is kind of the space that I just I love being in. But there's chicken farms for under a thousand dollars that people can get right now. There's sometimes they're 
for three hundred dollars. You know, we mm -hmm. find it and we we call our folks and say, hey, you want to get this land in Nigeria right now? Um, it's dirt cheap, and we're gonna, you know, we'll we'll do it here. If I try to put a chicken over here, a chicken over here, I'm gonna have HOA, my neighbors, the police, um, yeah. all yeah. coming. Hey, what are you doing with these chickens? That's illegal to have chickens. And, and, I've, and I've seen it, and it's not, you know, it has nothing to do about your color because the Mexicans, I remember my mother used to work for the police department. They keep calling on the Mexicans because they got chick, they're roosters, and they're going, you know, kill them. Right, like, right. What's the problem? You know, they don't like that they're killing animals in, in the neighborhood. You know? uh -huh. But here, you got to deal with so much politics where when we're in Africa, my wife is from Cameroon. Mm -hmm. and I see that where our place is and the kitchen is always outside, outdoors in another spot. You know, it mm -hmm. gets smoky. And I see the chickens and then I see the house help whose family bringing the chicken. And I said, man, fresh. Fresh. Why can't we do this at home? Yes. Oh, that's right. We got all the laws and the rules of why we can't do this. That's so right. that's going to just blow your mind and, mm -hmm. and your kids are going to want to come. I believe it. I believe yes. it. I believe it. You know, yes. they're going to want to come. Now, you, you've heard of the negative, you know, because Hotel Rwanda, and that's what stops a lot of people from a trip. Oh, mm -hmm. I, I saw the movie. The movie was how long ago? <laughs> Did that get long you time ago. And do you long have to explain ago. that to people? Hmm. You know, uh, not not yet because I haven't um, really shared uh, with people that I'm going to Rwanda. Uh, some people are still under the impression that I'm going to the Gambia, so I just haven't really opened up because it, this is this is fresh, this is new, uh, just happened over the last last couple of weeks. So I really haven't haven't shared, but. Uh, just looking at comments in general uh, online uh, as it relates to Rwanda, uh, you know, people just in the dark, people are just ignorant. Um, and I don't mean that in a bad way, but you know what it is, what it is. So in about Africa in general, people are just in the dark because we've been sold this particular story, you know, uh, that it's one way and when in fact, it's a lot of ways. There's a lot going on in Africa, right? Uh, any country you go into, any city you go into, you got poverty. You got some bad stuff going on in any city in the world that you go into, right? And so Africa is no, no different uh, in, in that respect. Um, but so there's good and bad any, anywhere that you go. I choose to focus on the good. And, you know, I don't want to live in that negative space, you know, because I can be aware of it, but I don't have to live in it. You follow what I'm saying? And so uh, here in Cincinnati, I don't ride through the, uh, through the hood and look at uh, the homeless. I don't, I don't hang out there. I mean, I know where it's at, right? Uh, I don't run from it. If I had to go through there to get somewhere, I, I'll do that, right? But I ain't hanging out there. You know, I ain't going down there trying to get people, homeless people money and nothing like that, right? If I see somebody out while I'm out, you know, I might drop something on them, right? But I'm not hanging out there, right? So I choose to, it's about choice wherever the, uh, you, you're at. And so when I was younger, uh, let's just say 20 years ago, I said, man, I would love to go to Africa, but it's too damn far away. You know, so that's, that's what I, I think that stops a lot of people, too. It's like, man, Africa's a long way away, you know, and uh, and that's real. It, it ain't like just going around, uh, going from here to Atlanta, right? So seven hour, eight hour drive, right? I'm in, I'm in Atlanta. But, you know, there's a interesting, um, uh, some facts that I read some years ago. It said that the average person lives and dies within a seven mile radius of where they were born. Wow. The average person lives and dies within a seven mile radius of where they were born. So a lot of folks ain't going nowhere. They ain't even going to the next state over. <laughs> and so this is the reality. I know some people that I grew up with that ain't never been nowhere, you know? Uh, 
when they go on vacation, they just chill at the crib, right? They ain't trying to go nowhere. So that, that's the reality. Uh, and then you have other people that's trying to go everywhere that they can, but they typically don't go to Africa, right? So before I had this revelation of finding out where, where I was from with my African uh, uh, ancestry, the spot that I was going to, I was saving money for, uh, was uh, in Mexico, uh, uh, Cabo San Lucas, right? I did my research. I said, man, I got to go to Cabo. And I'm still going, right? Because <laughs> it's just a beautiful place, right? But so as Americans, typically, and then certainly as African Americans, uh, we tend to go where kind of everybody's going. Right. And then uh, we don't go to Europe, you know, uh, we certainly don't go to Africa as it has been in the past. But that is slowly. Matter of fact, the, the is speeding up where the uh, people are becoming more aware and they're saying, you know what, I'm going to Africa. It's happening, man. And so but here's the other reality. People that have been enlightened and educated and had some balls, been going to Africa. There's some folks from the United States has been in Africa 30, 40 years. Went there, ain't never came back, right? But they far and few in between, right? And so now we're in an age where uh, when, when uh, Ghana's president announced the, the year of return, man, that just opened up the floodgates. And so now people are, are, are uh, a lot of people went to Ghana, but now people are starting to be aware, you know, it's 54 other countries there, man. You know, I can go some other, other places. And now we can go on YouTube and look and look at all these videos and see where people are, are showing the beauty of the cities and the, and the countries. And people are saying, you know what? I, I, I'm going to Africa, right? And so when I looked at Rwanda, if you look at Rwanda, in the real estate market, uh, it's absolutely incredible. The quality of housing from the marble floors to the light fixtures, it's, it's, it's you wouldn't even think you're in Rwanda based on what the media is telling you, right? Uh, this place is beautiful, man. Not only is it it's that, but it's considered to be one of the cleanest cities in Africa, one of the cleanest cities in the world, as well as one of the safest in Africa, as well as the world. And when you're looking at the backdrop of what happened with the uh, Hotel Rwanda in, in, in the Tutsis, right? In 1994, terrible, terrible situation. But I heard another brother who moved there, he says, man, there's something magical about the way that Africa or the, the Rwandan people have healed from that tragedy. The, the amount of love that now people are showing for each other as a result of that is unparalleled. It's, he said it's, 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 you, it's magical, the type of forgiveness that's in place and the love that they're showing to each other as, as brothers and sisters in, in Rwanda, right? So that's a, that's a phenomenon that the world hasn't seen in his particular eyes. And he's an older gentleman, he's been around, he's, he's, he's seen some things, right? Um, so the, Rwanda in a, in, a, in, a, in a lot of ways is, is a special place in a lot of ways. Uh, Africa, all of Africa is special. And after you go, you know, then the real thing is how do I bring somebody? Because it's one thing, you know, to go to a place, but then to bring someone else and inspire mm -hmm. others. It's like people say, man, I want to go to Harvard. But the real thing is paying for someone else's Harvard education or Yale yes. or wherever. But yes. And also bringing other people so they can get out of the bondage of oh, America, the greatest country in the world. I've interviewed people from all over. I've interviewed... Um, uh, a, a guy, you know, nomad capitalist is his name on YouTube, and he's mm -hmm. from Ohio, and he's a Caucasian guy, and he said, my dad always told me, go where I'm treated best. I dropped out of college because I've made millions in business. 
and mm-hmm. I continue to make millions, right? I'm paraphrasing. Right. And he's like, America to me isn't the greatest country in the world. <laughs> so he gave up his citizenship, like many have, and was mm-hmm. like, I'm out of here and I'm gonna go live my best life and find my wife in a place where, you know, sorry ladies who don't do this, but women who wanna be led, this is my words now, wanna cook, wanna clean, well, you know, you can work. My wife works. She's a scientist. Or, 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 you know, she, she, she's awesome, right? Mm-hmm. But you have a lot of people here who got a hard head where you can't lead the way you're meant to lead. And the law isn't for you to put somebody and let them know. Because if you tell somebody something right now, that might be a dang charge, you know, from the police. I'm not talking right. about putting hands on people at all because right. you don't have to do that. But just even the things that we say, they have this cancel culture. And I say what I want to say, because I, you know, cancel me, I'll be in Cameroon. I'm chilling. My my spot is already, (laughs) it's late. I'm ready. You ain't got to cancel me. I don't want to be in your circles. I want to be in my tribe, as the great Seth Godwin talks about. And Mm -hmm. my tribe are people who think like me and are willing to think outside of the box. What do you think, um, let's just say you go out there, and you gain this success that you couldn't even fathom, Mm -hmm. do you see that you could pitch this to your family, first starting with your kids, aunts and uncles, to say, look, I have a place for you. Come see, visit me. I got a room for you. You Don't worry about your bills. I got you for the first, you know, couple of months. I got to teach you how to make some money because I can't have it all be on me. That's not responsible. But could you, do you think that that could be a possibility with your family? Oh, no doubt. No doubt. Once I get there, uh, there will be others to come just because I made the trip. Uh, They will see that, hey, it can be done. Of course, I'm going to share my experience in terms of videos and and, and things of that nature. You know, I'll become a YouTuber while I'm there and share my experience. Right. And and, um, so I think and I really feel truly that it's going to be automatic. It's just going to be a matter of time. my aunts, I have, uh, my mother was the second of, of 14 children, eight girls, six boys. Uh, four of the boys are gone and one of the girls are gone, is gone. And so seven girls left my mother being the, the, the matriarch of the family. And so everybody's older um, and they country, good old country folk anyway, so they, they ain't, you know, trying to go too far. Right. Um, I think maybe 10 years ago when they were a little younger and they they also scared to death about this Corona stuff. Right. And so my aunts probably won't come. Uh, But, you know, my mother is such a trooper, man, and she loves her baby boy. Right. Um, My mother at 87 might get on the plane and come straight up. Right. Um, My sister she has uh, anxiety with planes. So if she on a plane more than four hours, man, you know, you're you going to give her a shot or something, man, to calm her down, right? <laughs> we, got shot. we got something. Yeah, you know, she's already did that once, just going to, to Jamaica. So, uh, but she just uh, said to me the other day, she said, well, how are you? She said, that's a long way away. How are we going to come visit you? So it's already in the psyche, you know what I'm saying? Um, So I think once I get there and and set up shop and they see that I'm doing well and I'm able to say, hey, like, look, this is this this is my spot. This is where I'm living. This is how I'm living. Somebody coming already know. Right. Uh, I talked to one of my friends, uh, a childhood friend, went to kindergarten together. He's like, man, he's going to retire this year or next year. And uh, I can see him coming. Um, You know, so I think there's going to be some followers you know, I'm going to lead the way for my tribe, right? And uh, there's certainly going to be some followers, man, because, um, you know, America is certainly not the greatest. Um, and you don't have to leave America to even find that out. You can read about other countries, right? Definitely. I spent six weeks in, excuse me, three weeks in Barranquilla, Colombia, back in 2011. Uh, man, 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 did I have a great time. The Latinas, oh my goodness, right? I went over there on a particular tour uh, 
possibly looking for a wife. And when I got there, the experience was, it, it, it blew me away in terms of just how nice the people were and how they received me. You know, uh, I'm 6'4", 210 pounds, cut, you know what I'm saying? They thought I was a professional athlete. So they just waited on me hand and foot, right? Um, it was a beautiful experience. What I found out there is that culturally, the Colombian people love their country. It's a poor country. They have, they don't have half as what we have here, right? In fact, it's so bad. I think the, the average monthly income there is three, four hundred dollars US dollars a month, right? Mm. And so culturally, women don't don't leave the house. Sons don't even leave that. Men don't even leave the house if they're not married. They don't just go out and get their own place, right? Number one, they can't afford it. Uh, but so it creates a family environment that's second to none that I've experienced to, to this particular point, right? In terms of the, the love that they show for each other in, in these tight spaces where you got a lot of people. You know, as African Americans, man, you know, you, you, even though we ain't got nothing, you be telling your kids, look, you get 18, you got to get out of the house, right? <laughs> and so everybody's trying to get out and get their own stuff, right? That's the culture that we, we deal with here. There, it was like everybody came together as family. They sit down and ate together as family. They did so much together as a family, man. I really enjoyed that and really appreciated that. I'm saying all that, all that to say this. The majority of them want to come to America just to experience America, but they're, they're not coming to stay. They want to come. They love their country. They want to come visit America, and then they're going back to Colombia. Yeah. That was the experience there from, from, from the culture, right? Um, so I would venture to say, well, actually, I read a particular article after that that there was a study done with the, with the 10 um, most happiest countries in the world, right? And six out of the 10 were Latin countries where they have less stuff, they have less money, but they have more love and they have more happiness, right? And that's just a beautiful thing because it ain't about the stuff. The stuff is just stuff, right? You can get stuff anywhere, right? Anytime. But it's Minus the stuff, what's inside, you see? And so that's where many of us have gotten lost here in this uh, American culture because it's all about stuff. It's all about what's outside of you. What have you accumulated? How many cars do you have? You know what I'm saying? What, what type of house you live in? How big is it? How much money? It's just stuff, 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 stuff. And so outside of ourselves. But the real living is done inside. It's about the inside. And that's what I Afri that's what we bring as African Americans, but we've lost that. The African culture still holds on to that because many of them, they don't leave the house just, just because they stay together as family. They eat as family, you see? And so uh, the culture is so important for us as, as, as people. Unfortunately for us, because this is where we were born and raised. We think this culture is the thing, but it's just the thing. It ain't the thing. <laughs> we, we live in the matrix and, and we have been, um, you know, it's as we, we speak about this, today is the last day of Amazon Prime Day where people are like, oh, I got $10 off or something. So if it's 20, it's going to be 10. Let me go buy some more stuff I wasn't even thinking about. And I won't lie, y'all, I'm guilty because I'm thinking about, hey, I need some new lights. Hey, what about a new this, a new that, right? right? Uh, right. Is my microphone all right? Should I get another one? Because, you know, <laughs> and, and, and that's how we are. That's why we are the number one consumers uh, yes. of that stuff. So the fact that you'll be able to teach that, I almost now see you doing a retreat type style, you know, in the future where you can unclutter the brain and, and that is something I say that because I've had a, my brother-in-law, he said, Kelly, you're going to bring all the black folk to Africa. They're going to have to go through a transformation because once those lights go out, 
and that water might get cut, you know, they're going to be like, wait, hold on, I got to go back home. I said, <laughs> you know what, you're right, but think about this. And these are things that we are either done or working on for different, you know, areas and property. We should all, if we're smart and able, be on solar. Now, in America, again, it costs a lot. And, it, and not like solar panels cost a lot, but they've made it where they want the market, like VCRs. When they came out, I don't know if you're old enough to remember. When VCRs mm -hmm. came out, they had to be priced. When DVDs came out, they had to be priced at a certain level. Now you can get one dang near for free because right. everybody's streaming. So it's the way they price it. But in Africa, it's not priced at that level. So mm -hmm. we should all be on solar in Africa. We should all have our huge container to collect the rainwater so we don't have to worry about the government. And, and now we're able to enjoy life. Because I'll be honest, when the lights cut out and my kids saw that for the first time, they try to hit them gadgets they were on late <laughs> night. What are we going to do? Right, right. I said, we, I'm going to cut the lights out at home just randomly. Because it's not about the lights. It's about people and experiencing what you can do in candlelight. And it takes me back to when we used to go camping with, you know, pops and, and do all that good stuff and bringing mm -hmm. it back to the basics. So that's what mm -hmm. life is really uh, um, great at. It's sweet at the basics. The you basics, know, exactly. A lot of love making can happen. That's why our, our grandparents had so many kids. Because, <laughs> you know, <laughs> at the basics. You know, <laughs> now, let me ask, for the entrepreneurs listening, are you planning at all to continue your business in America? Like, will it, you, do you have anything that will continue to make you income while you're there? Certainly, certainly. As I said, um, right now I'm venturing, venturing into this virtual speaking. Uh, as you know, I was really getting ready to crank up my speaking business just before COVID hit. And of course, nobody's hiring speakers right now. Nobody's getting on planes and, and going to conferences and where's, you know, five, 600 people, five, 6,000 people to speak. Uh, that has died for now. And uh, so this virtual speaking is, is, is the thing now. As a matter of fact, I'm starting a, a, a training, five day training next week to learn the ins and outs of virtual speaking and how I have to tweak things to make it fit for a virtual conference versus a, a live conference, right? Uh, and so I'll be able to do that from anywhere in the world. Uh, but as I said, you know, uh, my goal is to um, six months in Africa, six months here. How I break that up is gonna, gonna, uh, is gonna vary. You know, I might spend three months in Africa and come back here for a month and go, you know, so it's, it's, it's just, just gonna vary, but my business model is gonna allow me to do that. Now, uh, the, the coaching aspect as well, uh, I can do that from anywhere in the world. But you, you mentioned something that's, that's very interesting uh, because I'm looking at other business ideas in terms of how I can bring my expertise in terms of speaking as well as coaching to, to the continent. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I feel like I can, that, that retreat where we can get in, in a beautiful space and then allow me to, to teach uh, and share with the, my brothers and sisters on, on the continent, you know, my expertise and my experience in life, uh, just to be able to share that, right? And then get feedback and, 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 and learn what their experiences are so I can further uh, make myself valuable to the market there. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a beautiful thing, man. So I'm, I'm a rare individual in the sense that most of my peers are retired or getting ready to retire. And they just chilling. They ain't trying to do nothing but chill, right? <laughs> and, so, and, and ain't nothing wrong with that. They don't work 40 years, they, they can chill if they want to chill, right? But I, on the other hand, man, I still have, I still have this youthful energy where I want to do stuff. You know what I'm saying? I want to still create some stuff, right? Uh, and be, be adventurous and, and, and I ain't trying to chill, right? I'm gonna chill when I want to chill, how I want to chill, but I'm gonna chill at a high level, right? If I'm gonna chill for a little bit, then I'm gonna go back to work. So for me, I've always uh, had this kind of idea, there, there is no retirement. See, when you're doing what you love, 
you do it until you die. You know, George George Burns died at 100 years old. He was still entertaining, man. Smoking a little cigarette, you know what I'm saying? He was still entertaining, bro. So he ain't about no retirement. This is a, an American thing that we bought into. You know, uh, when you work, though, for somebody else and it's not what you want to do, you kind of get into that retirement uh, mindset. But when you're doing what you love, whether, you know, you look at the musicians, you look at uh, singers, you look at actors and actresses, you look at uh, writers, you look at uh, producers, they don't retire. Quincy Jones, Clive Davis, still going. Still going, man, because they have this creative energy and they're, they're living their purpose, right? Um, and so you don't want to retire from your purpose, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And yeah. so this is a, a part of what I teach in, in, uh, in my keynotes is that we have to find what it is that, that we're here for. Everybody's here for, for a specific reason, right? And you have to find out what that is. And the sooner you find that out, the better. Let's look at Michael Jackson. Come on, man. This brother knew when he was four, five years old, look, I'm going to sing and dance. That's what I do. Right now, unfortunately, for most of us, we don't know at that, that tender young age. Right. And, and we might start getting an inkling when we're 9, 10, 11, 12 years old. But usually our parents talk us out of, boy, you can't make no money doing that. You see. And so our, our uh, teacher said, you can't make no money doing that. And so they talk us out of it. And they steer us in the direction of this American dream. Go to school, get a good education so you can get a good job. Well, that's a model that is archaic at this particular point. But it's going to be an archaic model until the end of time, I believe, because the, the, the powers that be, college is a, is a serious money-making business. And so you got millions of people going to college every year that's coming out of college, graduating with degrees, even PhDs and masters can't get a job in their particular field. Mm -hmm. But guess what? They can start a business in their particular field, but most of them are not thinking from a business standpoint, right? And so they, they run around here looking for, for a handout, looking for work. Well, the creator has given us the ability to create. What is it that you want to create? You want to create a job? or you want to create a lifestyle for yourself, right? Um, and you do that by tapping into who you are for real, you know? And sometimes, you know, we got to make money along the way so that we can have this stepping stone to position ourselves to get to the, uh, to the purpose, right? If we don't know already, right? Um, but if you ain't got to be working for 20, 30, 40 years, man, why, why would you want to do that? Right. Um, well, you, said something. you said something because, you know, you are a John Maxwell certified trainer yes. and finding your 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 purpose is a, a lot of us because we don't know our purpose, we're lost. And then when we start making money, we don't understand what it takes to make more money. I tell people, you know, you need to learn how to start, sustain and succeed in business. And that's why we do stories like this. But also, you need to find out what it is to bring in a team. Because, yes. I, you know, as what I wanted to do, I always knew this is what I wanted to do. This is how I wanted to do it. I had to do, make it up because, one, they didn't want to hire me in places. I have ideas. Two, um, I finished, I was told I finished my master's degree too early. They said you were too young to finish it. I said I was behind. I, I had money issues on the way. I was <laughs> behind if you ask me. I should have been done at, you know, 21, 22 with okay. this thing. The way I, my, my brain works, because you can't tell me what a lot of work is. I'm going to knock that thing out. But we need trainers like yourself and consultants like myself to then take us to what that next level looks like, especially you got YouTubers making the first year $100,000, and they don't know what to do with it. And it's driving them mad. And I could tell you some names, but I won't. But I'm a, okay. you might understand some names. There are some people who are now just becoming popular in life. And uh -huh. you can tell because on YouTube, they don't know how to act. They done gone crazy. 
they done lost their dang mind because they'll say, I was ugly. And yeah, you, you were ugly inside, so you're ugly out, but that you don't know how to humble yourself. This is just money. This money could go like this, and mm -hmm. the money can also kill you. So I, I love how you put that. So I see the retreat. I'm going to say it before Jamal even makes it official. Y'all want to come to Jamal's retreat. <laughs> you need to get your deposit ready. It's not going to be cheap, but just like he jumped on it because he's going to, you know, get your mind right. And, and I just see it for you, brother. I see it. Like the glow, Bruce mm -hmm. Leroy glow, I yes. see it. It's, it's going to be awesome. Now, you, with the virtual stuff, that's going to be a win-win. And I think the YouTube, you know, when you go start visiting everybody and see the bag family, which I know it's going to happen. I already you know, it. You know um, don't, don't go over there. Um, I heard, no, nah, I'm not going to go there. Right, go right, there. right, 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 right. <laughs> I'm going to leave that alone. But, it, but I, love, I love the bag family. And I love, you know, most of everybody who's doing stuff. Even the people I don't like how they're doing it. Mm -hmm. There's a lane for everybody. Right. And people are just going down their path because of the hurt. You can tell the hurt. And we know yes. hurt people hurt people yes. and all that. Mm -hmm. and, and so I, I see it in you. What is the first food that you are excited to have when you get there? I'm a foodie, so I just got to know. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you know, it's it's... I don't know, man. I've, I've looked at so many dishes, man. It's like, I'm already, uh, look, I'm, I'm, I'm in the process right now of losing some weight because I know when I get there, I'm probably going to gain some weight, right? So I'm, 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 I'm in training to, to get ready for it, man. But I, I've seen so many dishes, man, you know, from, from the jollof rice to the fufu and the I'm like, man, I don't know, man. So I know I want some serious red snapper, you know what I'm saying, that I know it's going to be just readily available. Um, I just watched the uh, this uh, the couple, uh, the unapologetic nomads. They did, they had a seven course meal. Uh, I believe the place was uh, Choose Kigali, right? Mm -hmm. And I watched them through this whole seven course meal, man. It was, the brother, man, came, I mean, the presentation of the plates and all that was just, Phenomenal, and I have that as a background as well. Worked in several country clubs, so we know how how to 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 dress up a plate, right? Uh, so I don't know, man. I want some want some oxtails, man. I want some some you know some. You want, you want it all, okay? I I gotta get this out there because somebody's gonna you know be looking you up on your website and say, wow, okay, this brother went from broke to Bentley. Are you taking the Bentley with you? Are you selling? Are you sold the Bentley? Um, you know, we were talking about stuff before, and I wanted to throw it in there. But, you know, what type of African lifestyle do you plan on having? Because bringing a Bentley to Africa, you'll have more friends than you'll ever want. <laughs> well, I, I, won't bring the, I won't bring the Bentley. Um, because you know, my idea is to to empower the the African market. So I want to buy as much as I can from there, you know. Versus uh, you know spending money to put a Bentley on a, 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 a on a cargo ship to have it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so I want to see what's there, what's available, and and, and buy from that particular market. Um, so for me lifestyle is is important right because we have a choice to live like we want to live mm -hmm. and so some people say man why would you spend so much money uh, uh that much money for a car it's just a car so well if it's just a car why can't i get the kind of car i want you know what i'm saying it's just a car so yeah. a bentley is just a car a volkswagen is just a car so the reason why most people say, well, look, I, I'm not going to spend that much money because it's a, it's a money issue, right? But we have to get over money. And see, that's another thing. We've been taught how to, to accept less, right? Instead of building ourselves up to live the type of lifestyle that we want, right? Uh, get to the point where when you walk into a restaurant, you just get what you want. You don't start looking at the prices, Right. There are some people I've, I've been there, but you what is it that I want out of here? Right. So I'm getting what I want. 
And so that's a mindset. And so we have to change the mindset. And this is again, what, 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 what I teach. It's about the mindset. What, what do you want? So when I go to Africa, I'm looking for high quality life. I'm looking for a badass crib, right? And I've seen many that has blown me away. I'm like, wow. So I'm going to live, I'm not going to live below my means. I'm going to live at my means. That's just me. You see what I'm saying? So to me, it's ridiculous if you have the ability to, let's just throw some numbers out there. You have the ability to live in a $2,000 uh, 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 $2, a month penthouse with no problem. You got that kind of dough. So why in the hell would I want to live in an $800 a month place? No, man, this is life only. Live while you can, right? Be responsible with your money. You don't waste money, right? But I can afford this. You see what I'm saying? So if I'm making 10, 15, $20,000 a month, $2,000 a month on my place, that's to me, that's, that's doable. Now you got some people out there looking, well, why, you know, still like, why, why, why would you want to spend that much? Because we have the wrong idea about, it's not about the money. The money just affords you to do what you want to do. It's about how do you want to live? And so we've been, we've bought into this idea that you have to live below your means. No, what we need to do is create the means that we want so we can live out of here we want to live. For real. real, See, real, that's, real that's, a, that's, a, that's a different mindset. Okay, I want to live on, on this particular level, then I need this, this type of dollars. This is what I need to live on this particular level. That's a mindset as well, right? So we'll have to buy into what somebody else has designed for us. Let's look at the world, man. Look, they got Rolls Royce out there. Why do they why do they sell Rolls Royce? because there are people who buy them. There are people who want a Rolls Royce. There are people who want a Lamborghini and can't afford it, right? So for the people who can't afford it and for the people who don't, who don't want it, they say, man, that's, that's crazy, man. Why would you spend $200,000 for a car versus being able to spend $200,000 for a car? That's the difference. I'm able to do that. And guess what? Ain't nobody on the planet more creative than the African. Name me somebody. Okay, so that, that, that's, that's real. I am. It was. It wasn't until like ten years ago that I found out that the richest man in the history of the world is an African brother. Was an African brother. Okay. So even the white boys did their research and they said if, if you uh, calculate the money that he had at that particular time into the, today's dollars, it would be four, 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 five hundred billion. He's talking about Mansa Musa. Folks. Mansa Musa, uh, West African king from Mali, West Africa, controlled the whole gold reserves in the world. As a matter of fact, the brother had so much money, he was so generous with his money. When he went on expeditions, he would give so much money away along the course of his travels that would completely turn the economy upside down of the city that he was in. He but had it like that. We also talk about the part of, you know, having those things is great. And as long as they don't have you, because we see people giving their last and can't, you know, pe people go buy $300,000, $200,000 car, but can't afford the $18,000 maintenance that it costs yes. of the year of that car yes. or mm -hmm. more, you know, right. I'm just thinking right. with Aston Martin, I'm thinking of, but uh, you, you can't afford the, the maintenance on that. So make sure you guys, when you buy these things, they don't have you because dealing with influencers and, 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 you know, people who play sports and all that, I see such a waste and I say, you got it. So somebody else could say, wow, like it for yourself. You mm -hmm. know, don't go buy the house because it's a million dollar house. Buy it because you actually want to have, you know, the amenities and you can afford the property tax and the everything that, and that you can furnish the house too. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Million dollar home, the two pieces. Uh -huh. I'm not going to call you out. 
But right, right. <laughs> now, you know, I want to clarify some things, man. I'm not here to 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 preach wealth. Yeah. Even though that's a part of life for some, right? Uh, but it's about being who you are. See, when, when you talked about uh, earlier uh, 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 people having being hurt and 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 living a certain way based on the pain. Uh, and people going to Africa and, and doing things differently. See, there's a saying that wherever you go, there you are. Mm -hmm. You see, because wherever you go, you take yourself with you. Yeah. So it's a, just about being yourself. Yeah. You see, when if I'm high rolling and, I, and I'm staying in a $300 a night hotel room, right? It's got to be somebody in there who cleans up the, the room. There's a maid that cleans up the room. There's a janitor that cleans up the hallways. There's an electrician that makes sure stuff, the lights are on. There's a chef that makes sure I get uh, five-star food, right? And so you got to have all positions in this hotel to make it go. So one position is not better than the other. This is what we got to understand. The maid, just because she's a maid or he's a maid, they're, they're no less than the, than the uh, president or the, uh, the, the, the manager of the hotel. They're no, they're no less than the chef. You see, this is all perception. When we really understand it, guess what? I'm the maid, but I'm just as bad as your ass. I know you're the manager, but guess what? blood runs through my veins just like it runs through yours. So this is the mindset that we have got to get to. So my point in saying all that is that somebody got to clean up the beds. Somebody got to make it, but it don't have to be me. And, and I don't look down at the person who, who, who's doing it. It just don't have to be me. So I have to determine where do I want to fit at in this hotel chain? Do I want to own the damn hotel? Do I want to manage it? Do I want to be the chef? Do I want, do you see what I'm saying? So you, when you know who you are, then you know where you fit. And so a part of my teaching, again, is to, especially of us, us as African-Americans, because we've been sold this idea that we have to settle for less when we're the baddest damn thing on the planet, right? In many respects. But we've been taught that we're less than. And so consequently, we act less than. We expect less than, right? Because that's what we've been taught. But guess what? There's a new sheriff in town and there's a new teaching that you can have what it is that you want. First of all, you have to determine what it is that you want. That's the key. So it ain't nothing wrong with wanting a Bentley. But I tell people all the time, it ain't about the Bentley. It's about what it takes to get the Bentley. And when you have what it takes to get the Bentley, then you can get the Volkswagen, you can get the girl, you can get, you can get whatever you want, right? Because it's the mindset. It's all about the mindset. And that's why the position, that's why Africans and African-Americans are in the position that we're in today because the colonizers have created a mindset for us that says you, t you get less. You get the chitlins. You know damn steak up in here. And so Negroes still eating chitlins, man. I don't know I offended some of y'all, y'all get chitlin eating. My mama eat chitlins. You know what I'm saying? That's my girl. And you know, when she, when she cooked chili, I don't even go up to the house. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> they smell so bad. I remember the first time, man, my mom, uh, I can remember my mom cooked some chilies. I was outside playing, man. I came in the house. I was like, whoa, mama, what's that smell? She said, these are some chilies. I said, why do they smell like that? <laughs> she said, well, you know, you got to clean up the, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, girl, I ain't never ate none. Never will. My point is that our mindset, man, has been conditioned to give us what we got. 
that's why we're in the position that we're in today. So it's about changing the mindset. And that's why it's so powerful that people are going to Africa right now uh, to see the real Africa for themselves. And it is my hope that they go there with the right attitude, right? We see this movement uh, uh, saying that should African-Americans get uh, automatic citizenship? I say no. And here's why. Marcus Garvey said, and, and I'm paraphrasing, you sorry ass Negroes here, y'all gonna be sorry ass Negroes in Africa. So you need, you, my, if you're gonna be sorry, keep your ass here. If you're not, if you're not, if you're not gonna add anything to the continent, what's, what's, what's the use? If you're not gonna add anything to wherever you are, then what's the use, man? So, uh, no, people need to be vetted. <laughs> you, know you want to move to Africa and get citizenship? You need to be vetted to a certain degree. Is, is he crazy? Is he a mass murderer? You know what I'm saying? You got to be checked out, man. Yeah. I agree sure. with that's, you. That's what makes sense to me. I, I, I agree with you. And a lot of that talk, you know, we, 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 when I hear certain things and I recommend things to clients and I say, Automatic? No, that's not how any country does anything mm -hmm. outside of, you know, maybe Israel, but there's even still a process of the military you need to go through, you right. know, and in Nigeria, you have to serve in the, uh, what is it, the NY court, whatnot. So mm -hmm. when people say those things, one, I know they don't know how governments work, they don't understand, and they probably haven't spent enough time, especially in African countries, because to give automatic citizenship. It's like when my, my, my team, we were responsible for the new Black Panther website when it first came out, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. And I like the new Black Panther in theory, but I don't agree that every Black person should be allowed out of prison because I have family members who they needed to be right there. Mm -hmm. They were, they, they, you know, for different things that they did and it, and it wasn't like they, you know, mess with children. But it's like, you got to follow the rules because you messing it up. You done stole from your grandmother. You know what right. I mean? You right. need to fight there and do the time. Now, I think the prison system should be reformed. And I think black folks should take over that reform for black folks so we can give each other what we know we need. But um, we don't necessarily need to let everybody out because they're black because we have some pedophiles that are black. That's we right. got some, you know, serial killers. So when we start mm -hmm. talking like that, we start talking because we want the crowd's approval and everyone to say, we want fans. I don't worry about fans. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I want people in my tribe again who can roll with me through thick and thin because you ain't going to agree with everything I say. But to have citizenship for everybody, think about Pookie and Ray Ray who done just <laughs> shot up all of Chicago. I'm from Oakland, all of Oakland. Now they're going to come to Wakanda and start doing what do you think they're going to do? If it won't be Wakanda for long. It won't be. And, and so we got to, we have to, you know, get everybody's mind right. Because I'll tell you a story. We were in Kenya and one brother, I, I really um, enjoyed this brother's conversation, but he was, while we were all eating, he was a loner type, you know, a truck driver like myself um, in, a, in another life. And, and you get lonely sometimes. So you're used to being alone. Mm -hmm. And so he said, I was walking with my headphones and I'm walking and some people said, oh, nice headphones. They stood out, the headphones. He said, oh, you like my headphones? He was from, you know, uh, the LA area. Mm -hmm. What about my shoes? They're like, yeah, nice shoes. There's a group of guys. Yeah, it was nice shoes. You want to come take them? Is what he said to them. I said, they were just complimenting you, brother. Wow. But his mind, and I've heard other situations like that where folks took and misconstrued things. Mm -hmm. And it's like, culturally, okay, I could get it. I'm sure you might have saw some stuff in Colombia. You know, because they got the mestizos, yes. you, got that, you know, folks who I'm not black, I'm Afro Latina. Okay, okay. Right. You do look like, you know, what I consider black. <laughs> but we have to, when in Rome, take off that American baggage and be ourselves and find out who we are. And so I, I definitely, I feel you. I don't want to give the folks a game overload, and I want the people to visit your website. So I don't want you to give them too much of what they need to also purchase from you. Cause you guys have to understand you got to purchase wisdom now, you know, or it's going to take you a long time to get it. 
But jamalspeaks.com is the website. What is the YouTube name going to be if you already have had it, you know, laid out? Uh, the, the other website you can go to as well is jamalali.com, J-A-M-A-A-L-A-L-I.com. That'll, that'll, uh, both of those addresses will go to the same particular place. You know, I have um, uh, Jamal Speaks um, YouTube channel as well as a Black Nificent uh, YouTube channel. I probably will be promoting the Black Nificent TV channel. Right now, I don't have content ten on it uh, because of, you know, I need to slow down to see how I needed to, to operate it and, and do it correctly. And that's why you and I are going to have a meeting of, about that next week so I can uh, take advantage of, of your consulting and, and your services and be willing to spend some money. We got to, hey, you got to spend some money. You know, um, you, you have to uh, get some coaching, you see. Uh, anybody who's taking their game, whether the game is a YouTube channel or, or an athlete, they get coaching, man. If you want to take it to the next level and be the best in the world, everybody gets coaching. Oprah Winfrey had a coach. Maya Angelou was Oprah Winfrey's coach, right? Tiger Woods got, got four or five different coaches. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Denzel Washington had Sidney Poitier. Jesse Jackson had Martin Luther King. I can go on and on and on and on. So coaching is very, very important. And uh, in today's uh, arena, if you want to condense time frames, you spend some money with someone in an area of expertise that you want to master. You spend some money to cut the time, condense the time frame so you can get in six months or two years what it took them 10 years to get by spending some money, right? And investing, it, it, actually you're investing money in yourself, right? You know, Brother uh, Kellen will, will end up with money in his pocket, but you've invested in yourself by buying into his, his particular program. And so we got to get out of that mindset, too, of, of, of wanting everything free. Because people have bring value to the table. When they bring in value to the table, then that means you, you, you have to spend, spend some money. So jamalspeaks.com, uh, jamalali.com. Uh, Blacknificent TV is probably will, will be my YouTube channel as well as uh, my uh, Instagram. Now, I'm an older guy, so I'm not really into to all the technology and things of that nature, but I realize that uh, my business model has to change based on the times that we're in with Corona and all this. Uh, and so, uh, you know, I grew up when, when you used to keep quarters in your pocket so you can go use the pay phone. <laughs> so I'm, I'm dating myself a little bit, right? I grew up in a time when you left the house, you had a, you had a map, a physical map that you had to open up and read, right? And so all this technology and stuff, man, I'm a little I'm a little hard headed. I'm like, man, I ain't trying to do all that. But pretty soon <laughs> I'll be in a position where I'll just uh, uh, I'm in a position right now where I can just hire a team. But I need to learn some things myself so I know how it works. So I can when I delegate. Uh, authority and delegate, uh, uh, you know, the things that need to be done. I know how it works, right? Um, so yeah, man, it's it's it's, it's exciting. Um, as you can see, look look at my, look, how you like that, man? That's beautiful. That is beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm also uh, I started a podcast called uh, Black Nificent TV as well. Uh, initially when I started, it was, um, uh, Africa diaspora going home. And as I got into it, after about 10 episodes, uh, the ancestors spoke to me one night and said, no, you need to, you need to create a media company. I was like, wow, I don't, I don't even know how to, I'm, I'm just learning how to podcast. You're talking about media company. And so, uh, so this, I was given the name Black Nificent TV where the magnificence of blackness lives. So that's the tagline, right? And so we got all these YouTubers out there and other content creators, and they're really focusing on, there's a lot of focus on uh, what's wrong on the continent, all the uh, issues that we're having, you know, China's this and France that, and, and that's real talk, it's real stuff, right? 
But I decided when Black Nificent TV came to me through the ancestors that uh, my focus is going to be on the excellence that Black people across the globe bring to the world, what we bring to the marketplace, the excellence of Blackness. So that's the space that I'm, uh, I'm going to operate in where we bring these magnificent stories of, of brothers like yourself and Brother Phil and, and, and just Black folks that's doing tremendous things. And you ain't got to be no celebrity or nothing, but you know, so you got, you got a restaurant in, in uh, East Mississippi that everybody comes to, best, best barbecue in town. Those are the types of stories that, you know, I, I want to gravitate to as well as the, the, the high rollers and movers and shakers as well. So it's about the excellence of, of who we are as a people uh, across, the, across the globe. No, definitely, definitely. Uh, you guys be on the lookout. And I have a feeling you guys are going to see this on my personal YouTube and podcast as well as um, parts of it on the diversified game once the, the, the folks do what they do because we tackle business. We ta tackle what I tackle about just life. And I know it's two different audiences, but you guys like, share, subscribe. Make sure you tune in because the best is yet to come. Awesome, awesome. And make sure, and one thing I want to drop on my two, I am a Amazon best-selling author of my book, From Broke to Bentley, My Journey to Success. That's on Amazon, From Broke to Bentley, My Journey to Success. You'll see the cover with me and, my, and, and the white Bentley and, you know, tall, dark, and intelligent brother. You, you, you'll know it's me when you see the, see the cover. Uh, that, I wrote that book with the intent of it being a book series. So book number two should be out in the... Um, in, in the next couple of months, uh, from Broke to Bentley, My Journey to Success is, is volume one. The It's not about the Bentley, it's gonna be volume two. And then volume three is gonna be two Bentleys or better than one. And so once once I get through with those those three, I think I'll be done with, with, with writing books. But there, there are messages in there that I want us to understand a, a, as a people. Um, and so, yeah, be on the lookout for, for uh, the, the next two. And you can go to Amazon right now and buy From Broke to Bentley, My Journey to Success by Jamal Ali. Dang.